Last week, the International Criminal Court said that they were seeking arrest warrants for senior members of the Israeli government as well as senior leaders inside of Hamas. So we're going to talk about what that means, what all of this is, and what it could look like going forward. Now, for starters, the International Criminal Court is run by the Rome Statute, which is a group of 124 nations that have signed and ratified making them state parties to this court. Israel, notably, is not a member of the ICC, neither is the United States, as well as a handful of other countries around the world. Palestine is seated in 2015, which gives the ICC jurisdiction over crimes committed in Gaza. So that's kind of how they're approaching this. And for what it's worth, the ICC has regularly gone after members of individuals in nations that are not party to the Rome Statute. Now, the ICC is different than the International Court of Justice. The ICJ tends to go after nations, whereas the ICC goes after individuals. So in relation to the ongoing war in Gaza, it is the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, where the charge of genocide has been brought forward by South Africa. What we're talking about here are arrest warrants being sought by judges inside of the ICC, the International Criminal Court. So the charges that have been brought forward by the chief prosecutor, Karim Khan, uh, they've requested warrants. Again, they've not been issued as of this recording. They've requested warrants for uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, as well as Defense Minister Gallant, for charges of starvation of civilians as a method of warfare, willfully causing great suffering, willful killing, intentional attacks against a civilian population, extermination, and or murder and persecution. For the leaders inside of Hamas, which include Sinwar, the leader of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Mohammed Deif, the leader of the Qassam Brigades, the militant arm of Hamas, and then Ismail Haniyeh, the leader of Hamas overall, who lives abroad in Qatar. They say uh, for those, the charges include extermination, murder, hostage-taking, rape, and other acts of sexual violence, torture, and cruel treatment. Now, there's a lot of legal nuance that gets into this whole conversation, but especially into the specific charges. I'm not a lawyer, certainly not uh, well-versed in all of this, so I'd have to defer to other experts, trying to stay pretty high level in this walkthrough. Now, looking at the response from Israel, Hamas, as well as other stakeholders from around the world, both Israel and Hamas, to no one's surprise, rejected these charges against them, kind of for different reasons. So Netanyahu called the warrant against him, quote, a moral outrage of historic proportions, and said he rejected with disgust the comparison between democratic Israel and the mass murderers of Hamas. Hamas uh, also condemned this uh, the, the prosecutor, saying they're seeking an arrest warrant for the leaders of the organization, saying uh, they were upset that there was a equivalence being drawn between what they said is the victim and their executioner. Uh, the United States, which again, not a current member of the International Criminal Court, rejected what they also pointed to as some sort of equivalence between the terrorist organization Hamas and the democratically elected leadership of Israel. President Biden blasted the charges against Israel as outrageous, and some members of the U.S. Congress may be seeking ways to place sanctions uh, against the ICC in response, still waiting to see how that plays out. In Europe, it was somewhat mixed, and I believe all European Union member states are parties to the ICC, so they're much more involved with the organization as a whole. Uh, the U.K. criticized the warrants as, quote, deeply unhelpful. But the uh, Francis Foreign Ministry expressed support for you know looking into this and seeing where the process leads. So really around the world, somewhat mixed reactions, but also kind of what you would expect. Now, in terms of what the next steps look like here, again, to reiterate, there is a request brought forward for arrest warrants for these five individuals. The process now goes inside of the ICC, where three judges will assess if there are reasonable grounds to believe that war crimes and crimes against humanity have been committed. This assessment, this period, could take weeks or even months. It's complete speculation at this point. I have read that generally when judges from the ICC request arrest warrants, they tend to be granted, as in they don't go that step if they think that it's going to be rejected by these, this panel of three judges. But that, at this point, would just have to be total speculation. Now, it's possible that Israel does push back. In fact, I would say likely that they push back uh, on the admissibility case and whether or not this can be heard at the ICC 
at all. So the argument there would be that the ICC is designed to be a court of last resort. So cases are not designed to go directly to the ICC if they can first be held at the national, local, or state level. right? So Israel has begun some investigations into a, a series of allegations of incidents that have happened all across Gaza since the opening days of this war. But they haven't gotten into anything around this alleged crime of starvation, and there's nothing right now where Netanyahu or Gallant themselves are specifically being charged. And that's a big difference here, and, and probably why it's more likely that the ICC would hear this case if they see that the charges are viable. Now, after that period of time, if they decide to issue these warrants, it's not really very likely uh, that any of the individuals would be charged, arrested, or stand any sort of trial. So the ICC doesn't carry out arrests. They would require member states of the 124 members of the Rome Statute to arrest these individuals and bring them forward for prosecution and to stand trial. I just, it's hard to see that happening, right? For one, it's hard to see that happening to Deef and Sinwar, who are somewhere inside the Gaza Strip. The only people who are going to get them is Israel at this point in terms of a forcible extraction. And it's hard to see Israel pulling them out and then shipping them off to the ICC rather than handling that situation themselves. Then you've got the leadership figures. Ismail Haniyeh, there's no indication. He only travels in friendly countries. There's no reason to think that any of these friendly countries that have been relatively supportive of Hamas to this point would all of a sudden turn and ship Haniyeh off to The Hague. And then, of course, you've got the leadership of uh, Israel, Netanyahu and Gallant. It arguably could affect them quite a bit more because they would be traveling to a lot of countries and traditionally do travel to a lot of countries that are members of the ICC. However, again, it, it's hard to envision a scenario where a democratically elected leader and his minister of defense are apprehended in a friendly country and shipped off to face war crime trials. That is kind of how this whole process was designed to work. In reality, in practice, we just haven't really seen that. Now, uh, in terms of the impact to the ongoing war in Gaza, we're kind of hearing both sides right now. I tend to be in the camp that it's not going to have much of an impact at all. Some are arguing that this could pressure both sides to come to some sort of agreement. I don't see how that happens at all. In fact, what I've seen just from the commentary and the response from both sides is this kind of hardening their positions, entrenching folks in their positions, recognizing that they have to see this thing through to the end. So you're not going to see a direct impact in the coming days, weeks, or even months on the ground in Gaza. I expect Israel to continue conducting offensive operations, especially in and around Rafah in the southern portion of the Strip. Big picture, it could have an impact on uh, relationships with the state of Israel. So countries that are providing, especially the United States, that are providing military equipment for the ongoing war, there might be some complications with that if there is an arrest warrant issued by the ICC for the leadership of Israel for committing war crimes. That could put the United States in a predicament that they haven't found themselves in quite yet. Right? Remember, South Africa, the case of genocide, is being looked into. That is still under investigation. But if an arrest warrant is issued for committing war crimes and crimes against humanity, that could put uh, a significant challenge in front of the United States as they try to continue supporting Israel with military assistance. And a last note here that I've seen a lot of commentary on is around the legitimacy of the ICC and how these claims or how these allegations could affect that. Again, a personal opinion, I feel like it's not going to change how people already felt about this organization. If people were on board with the ICC and believed in their mission and felt like they should have jurisdiction around the world, they're going to view all of this as valid and legitimate. I do think they did themselves a favor by uh, actually going after leaders of Hamas. We haven't seen that in a lot of other international organizations that have kind of shied away from saying anything bad at all about the terrorist organization that conducted the brutal attack on October 7th. To the ICC's credit, they did include senior Hamas leadership in this request for warrants. And then there's just as many, if not more, people who already viewed the ICC as an inherently biased organization and are just going to view this event through those lens to kind of further solidify their position. I don't think that these actions, this request for warrants by the ICC is really going to shift anybody from one camp to the other. But either way, and however this plays out in the next few weeks or months, it's even more controversy layered on top of what is already a war filled with controversial events in Gaza. 
But that's all I got for now. Of course, if interested in this or other national security subjects, be sure to check out our Substack, which is linked in the description below. There's a wide range of topics we cover there, national security, war and conflict from all around the world. I think they're pretty interesting subjects. I'm learning stuff every day from our team there. Uh, if interested, again, linked in the description below. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.